Early morning adventures in the park today with the uh, the FD lenses. I'm gonna try and take some vintage photos of the cherry blossoms. In the bag today, we have a 70 to 210. We have a 50 millimeter, 135 millimeter, and a 24 millimeter. I think I'm gonna start with the 135. So my goal here is to try and shoot shallow depth of field shots focusing on the flowers and using defocused elements in the background to create interest. Let's see if we can do it. All right, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be looking at some photos I shot here in the beautiful High Park in Toronto and uh, I'm taking all these photos with FD glass here. I have the 70-210 uh, to 210 F4 on here and I'm curious to try out the uh, the macro capabilities uh, of this lens on some of the cherry blossoms. So yeah, it's going to be fun and uh, beautiful setting except for these grounds crews in their loud cars but uh, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous out here. Um, I really don't have a plan. I just want to take some creative photos and experiment because I feel like I'm getting rusty sitting at home and self-isolating all the time. So get out and do some photos. All right, that's the plan for today. All right, so today we're using the Photo Deox Pro FD to EOS R mount adapter. I don't know why it's an EOS R adapter. It's FD to RF adapter and uh, it works pretty well. I have no complaints. I've been using it for uh, several months now and uh, highly recommend it if you want to do some uh, FD glass shooting on your RF system. Link will be down in the description below if you want to pick one up. Now if you haven't experienced shooting with FD lenses yet, it's a lot of fun. If, for me anyway, it seems to have brought back the joy of photography again with the automatic lenses, automatic everything and it just everything's so easy to focus and, and you know what I mean? You point at something, you click the button, everything autofocus, autofocus, autofocus. It's super fast. With FD glass, you have to manually focus everything. And I find that stopping and slowing down to take the photo has kind of, I don't know, reinvigorated my excitement about photography. And that's kind of cool. And the other thing too, when you're using vintage lenses, is you get, you get all that character in the glass because it's not perfect. Plus you get the desaturated colors and that vintage look to your photos, which you'll see in this video, obviously. <laughs> trying out the new leash here by uh, by uh, who's it peak design pretty good liking it so far it's my first time using it but uh, yeah the vintage glass beautiful get some really nice photos with it so don't be afraid to uh, try it out all right so let's take a look at the shots I got on this photo adventure so this one was shot 4 34 in the morning as I was heading to the park and I've always wanted to get a shot of the streetcar tracks looking down the street without a lot of cars on the road and this is about as close as I'm gonna get to that so I figured I would snap this shot okay so here's the first shot of a cherry blossom I shot this with the 135 millimeter wide open at 3.5 I wanted to see how creamy that background is and I am really impressed that is a nice creamy background Okay, and I know this shot looks a little chaotic, but I really love the sight of the sun coming up through the trees and all the chaos from the branches. I thought that was pretty cool. And if you notice, there's no aperture for this because when you shoot photos with the adapter and the FD lenses, the camera doesn't record the aperture. So if I don't remember what it is, I don't know what it is. And in High Park, there's a beautiful path with a colonnade of cherry blossoms going down one side and it's beautiful sight lines. And I got this shot shallowed up the field just as the path starts to dip and go downhill. And I couldn't compose it a little further to the left because the city workers decided to put giant, ugly garbage cans there. And I bet you they're over there hiding behind the bushes watching photographers show up and then they're like, ha ha ha, we just put garbage cans in your sight lines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it. You guys got me in stitches. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So uh, this is actually one of my favorite shots from the day. As the sun was coming up over the horizon, it was creating this band of light on these branches of these sycamore trees that didn't have leaves. So the, the branches are illuminated and the background's kind of dark. And I flipped this image into black and white because it's all about the textures. I focused on the trees in the background and you got these interesting white patterns from the illuminated branches in the foreground. And then you got some dark leaves coming down from on top and it just it creates such an interesting mood I don't know let me know what do you think down below in the comments do you like this is it too weird too avant-garde 
and this is definitely one of my favorite shots from the shoot i just love the way the path kind of winds downhill and then you've got the flowers uh, the, the petals from the flowers kind of strewn across the ground and it's kind of a little bit chaotic a little bit beautiful i love the ambience here and i created a preset just for this shoot i kind of shifted the whites towards pink i made the greens more lively i tuned a couple other colors so if you like the way the preset looks it's definitely available in my online store so if you want to go check it out you can uh, go download it for yourself and here's a macro photo shot with the 70 to 210 telephoto macro. So if you're interested in that lens and you want to know how close you can get to a subject, here you go. And I composed it using the rule of thirds, so everything kind of lines up with those uh, those marks on the right side. So I shot this photo to be used as a design element in a future project. So. I left a lot of negative space at the bottom and it's defocused negative space so I could put text in front of it, graphic elements, or I could even upload this to a stock website and someone else could use it. And I composed it again using the rule of thirds. So the uh, bunch of flowers in the top left corner line up with the cross marks on the rule of thirds. So it looks pretty good. And here's another beautiful shot of High Park in the springtime. And I used the rule of thirds to compose this shot as well, but I used the rule of thirds in a kind of different way. I put the flowers in the top two thirds of the frame and I put the path in the bottom third of the frame. So everything's split into thirds and visually it looks nice. It's a good composition. So uh, there you go. If you didn't know that trick with the rule of thirds, now you know. All right, so the rest of the shots in this video were all shot around trees like this with the sun low on the horizon. So this is just a context shot so you understand the environment I was working with when I created the shot. So uh, with that being said, <laughs> let's move on to the next shot. Okay, so this is a really unorthodox image and composition, but to me, I found it pretty cool. I like the uh, defocused cherry blossom branches in the foreground and then the cherry blossom branches in the background, which are the subject matter, are kind of like just reaching towards the sky and flailing around everywhere. It's kind of like the trees dancing. To me, it looked interesting, so I grabbed the shot. For this image, I wanted to get right up into the cherry blossoms so the viewer would feel like they were actually in the cherry blossoms. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job. And here I used the rule of thirds to compose the shot. I wanted to get the sun in the top left quadrant on that intersection in the rule of thirds. But when I did that, the, uh, the green leaves were being cut off. So I had to compose the shot and move the sun along that rule of third line a little bit till I get the leaves in the shot. And then I snapped the photo, really like it. So sometimes you have to bend the rules a little bit to get the shot you want. And I was working with the same concept for this shot, except I composed it with the sun in the bottom right intersection on the rule of thirds. So you have this negative space, defocused space above, and there's a nice light airy space in the middle. And to me, the shot just looks a little more open and airy and inviting, and it's a little more visually pleasing. So that's that. What do you think? Did you like the previous shot more or this shot? Let me know in the comments. And here's a super simple composition and visually satisfying again using the rule of thirds we put the subject matter which is the green leaves popping out of the uh, tree branch in the bottom right corner lining up with the intersection on the rule of thirds and we have a nice defocused background which could be used for graphics text posters stock photos that kind of thing so super simple super easy and this is just an example of how the rule of thirds can help you compose images nice and fast now here's another simple and beautiful image that I use the rule of thirds to compose with, but again, I use the rule of thirds in a different way. I put the flowers from the cherry blossoms in certain boxes of the rule of thirds and left other boxes open. So the kind of the open space, the negative space and positive space kind of form the thirds in this photo. So that's what creates the visual appeal here. Now it's time to change the perspective, but still shoot in the same style. So we're shooting close, but this time at 24 millimeter. So you can see a lot more of the background in there while the foreground kind of jumps out at you. Looks pretty cool. Different technique. And for the last shot, we're sticking with the 24 millimeter and we're getting right up to the trunk of the tree and shooting straight up. And we're getting those interesting shapes and patterns with the, uh, I guess the limbs of the tree going off in different directions and the dark limbs kind of contrast against the white flowers. And that uh, looks pretty cool. I kind of like this. And uh, yeah, that wraps everything up. Hopefully you enjoyed those photos. Now to close out the video. So those shots came out pretty good. I was happy with the way they uh, they looked. Hopefully uh, some of you who are photographers and uh, watch this get inspired to get out there and shoot your own photos of cherry blossoms because uh, it's pretty cool. All right, and this video is over. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this content. I'll be making some more videos about FD glass and how to adapt it to your RF system. I'll do a little tutorial video on how to actually set up your camera to work because uh, there are some settings you have to change in order for the FD glass to be able to work and for you to be able to shoot the, uh, the photos. So that'll be coming in another video. But for now, this video is over. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of content, definitely subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on social media as well. And uh, there are my links right there. So uh, yeah, if you want to see more of these photos behind the scenes stuff, follow the social media. And that's it.
peace out thanks for watching i'll see you guys in the next video